microgrids to prevent these system overloads. We're waiting for President Biden mm -hmm. from the Roosevelt Room. There is a live report headed our way, and we're going to hear him speak uh, about that tragedy that uh, happened, the Baltimore Bridge collapse when that cargo ship ran into it uh, in the overnight hours. 1.30 in the morning is when this happened. We are now approaching 11 hours since that was called in, and there was a massive response. Uh, I think they were expecting uh, up to 20 people on that. The good news out of all this is that uh, there were eight people on there. Two have been rescued so far, and six as the recovery rescue uh, operation continues. Six people still missing. Sure, and they were talking about the uh, temperature of the water as well. Divers were down there uh, searching for these. Uh, there were eight people total. Two were rescued. Uh, one of them was okay. The other did go to the hospital, but they were talking about the temperature of the water and uh, how long somebody could possibly last in the water uh, before, you know, freezing uh, hyperthermia risk. So they were, uh, you know, still searching at this hour. This is a live look right now. Uh, hoping to find the remaining six. We've learned that they were uh, construction workers on top of that bridge working, uh, filling in potholes on that bridge when that bridge collapsed. You know, as everyone uh, was responding to this, uh, the information coming in, you wonder how does a ship like that just run into a bridge mm. when they have a local pilot who takes those vessels, if they're incoming, goes out to sea, gets on board and brings it in because of the intricacies of that river channel. And if it's outgoing like this one was, uh, the pilot takes it out to sea and then gets off and it continues on its way. This ship was headed to Sri Lanka uh, out of that harbor there. All of the traffic in and out of the harbor has been stopped, not just for search and rescue efforts, but because that bridge is sitting in the water. They can't get through safely right there right now, and there are millions of dollars per day uh, in transportation items that need to be shipped in and out of that area. Very busy harbor, the ninth busiest in the country. Yes, and uh, the FAA also stopping all flights around around this area over the bridge collapse. Uh, they announced that around 8 o'clock this morning that they were not allowing any commercial airlines to fly around this as they continue their search. But thank goodness uh, they were able to make that May Day call right before they hit that bridge, allowing them to stop the traffic from going over because those construction workers, they fell into the river. Uh, but imagine the amount of commercial vehicles and trucks that, that you know would have gone in if they did not shut that bridge down when they did. It saved lives. It did. Uh, it very, saved very a simply lot of lives. It saved lives because the traffic uh, just plain stopped on that. Uh, the one uh, they have re reported early that a tractor trailer was involved in that, but that was the cement truck that was doing the work uh, with some of the concrete um, that they were uh, trying to fix some of those potholes and get that bridge uh, together. So there's no time frame uh, whatsoever about when that bridge uh, might be repaired or at least cleared out. Some of the uh, pieces of the bridge need to be cut into mm. more pieces before they get removed. And the equipment to do that is not headed in that direction for a few more days. So the days and weeks yes. ahead that it takes to get that uh, back up and running. Yeah. And a major artery around. It's, it's a beltway uh, to get around Baltimore, to get around uh, the outer Baltimore County. A major thoroughfare yeah, for a exactly. lot of people. Yeah. All right. We're waiting for President Biden. Uh, as soon as he comes out, we will take him live. But we're going to go over to Brian Schrader now. Uh, he's got a cloudy look over Wilson, Brian. Yes, this is a look at the Whirly Gig Park there in downtown Wilson. And you can see they're not moving right now. The temperature in Wilson is in the mid-50s. Again, that calm wind, that will change, though, as we head into Thursday. We've got a cold front coming through that will bring us some gusty winds on Thursday, along with a good soaking rain. And Michelle mentioned that we are looking at mostly cloudy skies. In some areas, we have the clouds thin enough that a little sunshine is getting through, so we kind of have that milky sun, just enough to cast some shadows. As we head through the rest of the afternoon, we'll see temperatures warming into the mid-60s later today, and it looks like our rain chances will hold off until the overnight hours. Here's a look at satellite and radar. We're tracking this cold front that's moving through western Tennessee right now, and you can see all that moisture ahead of it. It's all heading our way, so let's check in and see what the uh, time frame for that is, and it looks like that the president's getting ready to speak. Thanks, Brian. All right, President Biden in the Roosevelt Room. For North Carolina, which I'm going to do in a few minutes, I want to speak briefly about the terrible incident and accident that happened in Baltimore this morning. At about 1.30, container ship struck the Francis Scott Key Bridge, which I've been over many, many times commuting 
from the state of Delaware, either on a train or by car. I've been in Baltimore Harbor many times. And uh, the bridge collapsed, sending several people in the vehicles into the water, into the river. And uh, multiple U.S. Coast Guard units, which are stationed very nearby, thank God, were immediately deployed along with local emergency personnel. And the Coast Guard is leading the response to the port, where representatives from the Federal Highway Administration, the FBI, the Department of Transportation, the Army Corps of Engineers, as well as Maryland officials in Baltimore Police and Fire are all working together to coordinate an emergency response. Officials at the scene estimate eight people were unaccounted for still, not still, were unaccounted for. That number might change. Two have been rescued, one without injury, one in critical condition. And the search and rescue operation is continuing for all those remaining as we speak. I spoke with Governor Moore this morning, as well as the mayor of Baltimore, the county executive, United, to both the United States senators and the congressman. And my secretary of transportation is on the scene. I told them we're going to send all the federal resources they need as we respond to this emergency. And I mean all the federal resources. And we're going to rebuild that port together. Everything so far indicates that this was a terrible accident. At this time, we have no other indication, no other reason to believe there's any intentional act here. Personnel on board the ship were able to alert the Maryland Department of Transportation that they had lost control of their vessel, as you all know and reported. As a result, local authorities were able to close the bridge to traffic before the bridge was struck, which undoubtedly saved lives. Our prayers are with everyone involved in this terrible accident and all the families, especially those waiting for the news of their loved one right now. I know every minute in that circumstance feels like a lifetime. You just don't know. It's just terrible. We're incredibly grateful for the brave rescuers who immediately rushed to the scene and to the people of Baltimore who want to say, we're with you. We're going to stay with you as long as it takes. And like the governor said, you're Maryland tough, you're Baltimore strong, and we're going to get through this together. And I promise we're not leaving. Here's what's happening now. The search and rescue operation is our top priority. Ship traffic in the Port of Baltimore has been suspended until further notice. And we'll need to clear that channel before the sh ship traffic can resume. The Army Corps of Engineers is on the spot and is going to help lead this effort to clear the channel. The Port of Baltimore is one of the nation's largest shipping hubs. And I've been there a number of times as a senator and as a vice president. It handles a record amount of cargo last year. It's also the top port in America for both imports and exports of automobiles and light trucks. Around 850,000 vehicles go through that port every single year. And we're going to get it up and running again as soon as possible. 15,000 jobs depend on that port. And we're going to do everything we can to protect those jobs and help those workers. The bridge is also critical to, for travel, not just for Baltimore, but for the Northeast Corridor. Over 30,000 vehicles cross the Francis Scott Key Bridge on a daily basis. <clears throat> it's virtually, uh, well, it's a, well, it's one of the most important elements for the economy in the Northeast and the quality of life. My transportation secretary is there now. As I told Governor Moore, I've directed my team to move heaven and earth to reopen the port and rebuild the bridge as soon as humanly possible. And we're going to work hand in hand with the support of Maryland to support Maryland and whatever they ask for. And we're going to work with our partners in Congress to make sure the state gets the support it needs. It's my intention that the federal government will pay for the entire cost of reconstructing that bridge. And I expect to, the Congress to support my effort. This is going to take some time. The people of Baltimore can count on us, though, to stick with them at every step of the way until the port is reopened and the bridge is rebuilt. You know, we're not leaving until this job gets done. Not leaving until then. So I just want to say God bless everybody who uh, everyone harmed this morning and their families. And may God bless the first responders, many of whom risking their lives. And. Uh, I'm going to, the reason I'm not going to take a lot of questions, there's remaining issues that are open that we've got to determine what's going to happen in terms of the, the rescue mission and the like. But I'll. Do you, do you plan to go to Baltimore, sir? And if so, how quickly? I do, and as quickly as I can. That's what we're you said the federal government's also going to pay for the repairs. I'm just curious, this was a ship that appears to be at fault. Is there any reason to believe that the company behind the ship should be held responsible? And then also, you that mentioned.
Our President Biden started to take questions there as he wraps up his news conference, a busy schedule, including a trip to North Carolina today, but saying that he would get to Baltimore as soon as he can. Uh, reiterating a lot of the information that we have heard throughout the day from officials, uh, but adding in that he expects the federal government to pay for the reconstruction of that bridge. And just to note how busy that harbor is, ninth busiest in the country, yeah. but the number one in and out for Automakers and manufacturing 850,000 vehicles coming through there uh, every uh, year and 15,000 jobs attached to it as well as far as traffic on the bridge for cars going over 30,000 vehicles a day in their commute. Yeah, we will continue to cover this story throughout the day on air and online for you. So you can look for the latest uh, coming up in our one o'clock and our four o'clock news as well. But now we're going to get over to Brian Schrader. He's